We recently launched Liberation Martial Arts Online for trainers, collectives, and individuals that were looking for a program to follow that was chud free or perhaps one that came directly from us. Thanks to Tang Na, Centipede, and Kikimura Cook for signing up. If you would like to sign up for Liberation Martial Arts Online, or you just want to increase your financial support for the Southpaw Project, you can find special tiers on our Patreon. If you'd like to listen to all of our shows without any breaks or interruptions, you can find uncut versions of our shows also on Patreon. This is Sam. And this is Southpaw. This episode was produced by S.H., M. Shelton, and New Guy. In August of 1865, Colonel P.H. Anderson, a cruel and abusive former slaveholder, sent for Jordan Anderson, someone he had previously enslaved, to come back to work at his plantation. Jordan Anderson, who was withheld the opportunity to learn reading and writing by Colonel Anderson, dictated his response to a newspaper. It's a brilliant piece of sarcasm that probably went over Colonel P.H. Anderson's head. Dayton, Ohio, August 7, 1865. To my old master, Colonel P.H. Anderson, Big Spring, Tennessee. Sir, I got your letter and was glad to find that you had not forgotten Jordan and that you wanted me to come back and live with you again promising to do better for me than anybody else can. I have often felt uneasy about you. I thought the Yankees would have hung you long before this for harboring rebs they found at your house. I suppose they never heard about your going to Colonel Martin's to kill the Union soldier that was left by his company in their stable. Although you shot at me twice before I left you, I did not want to hear of your being hurt, and am glad you are still living. It would do me good to go back to the dear old home again and see Miss Mary and Miss Martha and and Alan, Esther, Green, and Lee. Give my love to them all, and tell them I hope we will meet in the better world, if not in this. I would have gone back to see you all when I was working in the Nashville hospital, but one of the neighbors told me that Henry intended to shoot me if he ever got a chance. I want to know particularly what the good chance is that you propose to give me. I'm doing tolerably well here. I get $25 a month with victuals and clothing, have a comfortable home for Mandy. The folks call her Mrs. Anderson. And the children, Millie, Jane, and Grundy, go to school and are learning well. The teacher says Grundy has a head for a preacher. They go to Sunday school, and Mandy and me attend church regularly. We are kindly treated. Sometimes we overhear others saying, them colored people were slaves down in Tennessee. The children feel hurt when they hear such remarks, but I tell them that it was no disgrace in Tennessee to belong to Colonel Anderson. Many darkies would have been proud, as I used to be, to call you master. Now, if you will write and say what wages you will give me, I will be better able to decide whether it would be to my advantage to move back again. As to my freedom, which you say I can have, there is nothing to be gained on that score, as I got my free papers in 1864 from the Provost Marshal General of the Department of Nashville. Mandy says she would be afraid to go back without some proof that you were disposed to treat us justly and kindly, and we have concluded to test your sincerity by asking you to send us our wages for the time we served you. This will make us forget and forgive old scores and rely on your justice and friendship in the future. I served you faithfully for 32 years and Mandy 20 years. At $25 a month for me and $2 a week for Mandy, our earnings would amount to $11,680. Add to this the interest for the time our wages have been kept back and deduct what you paid for our clothing and three doctor's visits to me and pulling a tooth for Mandy, and the balance will show what we are in justice entitled to. Please send the money by Adams Express in care of V. Winters, Esquire, Dayton, Ohio. 
If you fail to pay us for faithful labors in the past, we can have little faith in your promises in the future. We trust the good Maker has opened your eyes to the wrongs which you and your fathers have done to me and my fathers in making us toil for you for generations without recompense. Here I draw my wages every Saturday night, but in Tennessee there was never any payday for the Negroes any more than for the horses and cows. Surely there will be a day of reckoning for those who defraud the laborer of his hire. In answering this letter, please state if there would be any safety for my Millie and Jane, who are now grown up and both good-looking girls. You know how it was with poor Matilda and Catherine. I would rather stay here and starve, and die if it come to that, than have my girls brought to shame by the violence and wickedness of their young masters. You will also please state if there has been any schools open for the colored children in your neighborhood. The great desire of my life now is to give my children an education and have them form virtuous habits. Say howdy to George Carter and thank him for taking the pistol from you when you were shooting at me. From your old servant, Jordan Anderson. If you love the Southpaw Project, become one of our financial supporters. It'll help us supplement the cost of running this project, the incredible time and energy we put into it seven days a week, and you'll be giving us some breathing room, not only to juggle Southpaw with our day jobs, but also to expand Southpaw into other areas. We can't exist without your contributions. Show your Southpaw solidarity by supporting us at southpawpod.com. <laughs>